Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend Guide Live. So God says, go baptize folks. His word, his command. So we take that command and we mix in equal parts. I love getting credit for stuff. And well, if you think about it, I mean, if you were baptized as an adult, nobody coerced you. You chose to be baptized. And even if you were baptized as a baby, your parents chose to do that. Like somebody's will was involved. We mix it all together in a bowl with our sin, our old Adam. And um, all of a sudden, it's a whole lot easier to draw the conclusion that baptism is something that we do for God rather than something that he does for us. After all, he commands us to do it. And pretty soon, it sort of turns into the, I pledge allegiance to the Jesus. Baptism becomes not just our work, but our promise and our show. And the more that we think this, the more we tend to want to spice it up a little bit. Because that water doesn't look like much. So let's get more of it. Instead of that little bowl on that wood stand you got in the church, maybe let's get like a hot tub. Maybe like a river, like a John the Baptist on the Jordan River kind of thing. Because how much water should matter? There has to be a lot of water because I love Jesus a lot. And I realize that nobody out and out says these things, but what happens though is more and more God's word and institution start to take second place in our conscience to the promises that we make in those waters. And then even worse than baptism being our decision, it turns into our guilt trip. Remember that big decision that you made for the Lord? That big river? That big spiritual fullness that you had inside of it? I mean, I promised I'm better than this, or at least I should be. But the sins that we don't want to do, we keep on doing. And the thoughts that we don't want to think, we keep on thinking. I promised I'm better than this. But I'm not. O wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's actually what baptism is for. It's God's word and God's command. But it's also God's name. And that changes things. In the large catechism, Luther writes, For these are the words, Go ye, baptize. However, not in your name, but in the name of God. For to be baptized in the name of God is not to be baptized by men, but by God himself. Therefore, although it is performed by human hands, it is nevertheless truly God's own work. From this fact, everyone may himself readily infer that it is a far higher work than any work performed by a man or a saint. For what work greater than the work of God can we do? See, here's the thing. People can splash all the water they want, but if God is not going to lend his name to it, I sort of have to agree with everyone who says that baptism is worthless because at the end of the day, you can splash a whole bunch of water on somebody, but they're still going to be a sinner unless God puts his name in that water too. Because God's name is what does stuff. God's name does so much stuff that he gives us a commandment not to misuse it. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. He does want us to use it, but it has so much power that we have to be careful with it. Well, he gives it here. And he gives it for purpose. Here he joins his name to water for you. Baptism is water with God's word, God's name, and the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that name does so much that baptism isn't our work for God. It's his work for us because his name in that water is what is doing all of the work. His name in that water is what is drowning that old Adam and raising up that new man. His name in that water is what is forgiving sins and making us children of God. Nobody was baptized by men at all. Maybe God used their hands just like he used some water, but all of his creation Creation is put to his use for his will, and it is God's will to baptize you. People don't baptize you. God baptizes you. That's why Paul doesn't care who he baptized, because he baptized nobody. Except for, you know, that long list of people that I guess maybe he did baptize. It's hard to remember. I don't know. Who cares whose hand it was? That's the point. Who cares whose hand it was? God did this. And it's not just semantics either. Please understand the reason that we have this discussion is not so that we can quibble. Knowing that baptism is God's work means that God can actually be found in your church. Church isn't just where we get together to talk about God and make promises to love him or behave for him and then lie to each other about why we totally did even though we didn't. 
Churches where God is truly present for you. That font in the front of your church, even maybe right by the door of it, so that you can know how you got here, is a proof that great miracles are done in your church, right up the block, because right there in your church, God sticks his name into water and then drowns you in it there and raises you up to life everlasting. It's for all of the times that you don't live up to your promises. It's for all of the days that you feel like a sinner. The river doesn't actually matter. If it was the Jordan River itself, as long as God's name was there, there is great comfort to be found. But that Jordan River without God's word and command, without his name, is just water. But in that tiny little bowl at the door to your church, if, if three little splashes from the water in that bowl with God's word and command, his name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, if his word is attached to that little bit of water in that little bowl in that little church by that little pastor, well, God's name was still there. And God's name does big things. I know that we want credit for this work, but here's the thing that's so ironic. God is trying to give us his credit, a work higher than any saint, a, a greater work than any man could ever do. God wants to give you credit for his fulfillment of the law, his sacrificial death upon the cross, and tie you to his resurrection from it. You don't have to trust your pledge in your baptism. You can trust God's pledge to you because it is his name that is at stake in this thing. Through these waters, you have his holiness, his worth, his works, his love, his very identity. You are a child of the Father, and so you are worthy of love. Because God puts his name on you in that water. You're baptized, and that's good news.